Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, it's me Kine. No, I did not just murder a Muppet, this is a sewn tutorial for this fur jacket that I made. I know it's not exactly the season to be wearing fur, but it's sort of just a staple in my drag wardrobe. It's such an easy way to kind of add, I want to say bulk, but bulk is like kind of an ugly word. It adds a sort of grandeur and drama to any outfit. It's actually a lot easier than it looks, all you need is some faux fur, a lining fabric so that it looks cuter and so it doesn't feel as itchy when you wear it. You're also going to want to have a jacket of yours to trace out and of course a sewing machine. Um, but you can also try to hand sew it if you have the patience. I'll put a full list of all the supplies and materials down in the description, but let's get into the tutorial. All right, so you're gonna wanna start off with two fabrics, the fur and the lining fabric, which is gonna go on the inside of your jacket. I have one meter of fur and the lining fabric, I think is two meters, but they have a different width. So I don't know, you can usually eyeball how much you think you need. Anyway, I'm starting off by taking a jacket that already fits me pretty well. And I'm gonna make my new jacket based off of this. Mine happens to be another fur jacket, you can tell I like fur jackets, so I flipped it inside out to get a better look at the construction. I've seen some people use like tracing paper and patterns and measuring tapes. I think this is just easier and I wanted this tutorial to be super easy to follow. Basically you have the large back shape, two front pieces, and two sleeves. Now since the front and the back are pretty much almost the same shape, I just traced out the back of the jacket and I folded the fabric so I could cut out two identical shapes. For the sake of symmetry, you can fold it in half down the center and just cut out half of the shape so it's symmetrical. Now that you have two identical back pieces, cut one of them down the middle and then you have the two front pieces that you can connect like a vest. For the sleeve, you won't be able to see the full shape laid out since it's wrapped around itself like a tube, so the best you can do is just trace only one side. But if you do this on the edge of a fold and then cut it out, when you unfold it you get the full sleeve shape. Do this twice and you have two sleeves. Once you're done tracing and cutting out the back piece, two front pieces, and two sleeves, use these pieces to cut out identical shapes from your fur since it's easier to trace around these than it is to trace around the jacket. Before you start tracing, make sure the fur is oriented so that the direction of the fur hairs are pointing down, just so it looks normal. At least do this for the front and the back. For the sleeves, I didn't have enough space to cut wherever I wanted, so I just cut them out from wherever they could fit on the fur. Fur can be such a mess to cut out, but try your best to only cut that thin white base where the fur is coming out of. If you go wild with your scissors, you can end up cutting the actual hairs, which just results in a huge mess. Pro tip, you can actually just rip the fur once you have a cut going, but it's not very practical for cutting out delicate shapes and curves, so I recommend just taking your time. Once you're done replicating all of the pieces of lining onto the fur and you've cut them all out, the next step is to put these all together like a puzzle. I'm going to create the jacket out of the lining and the fur separately and then attach them together at the very end. That way we have as little visible seams as possible. The front and back pieces are the easiest ones to attach. Just make sure you attach them right sides together so that all the ugly markings are facing outwards. And then just run a straight stitch down the sides and along the shoulders and you should be left with a little vest. When I tried it on, I realized the front went up way too high and I looked like a Walmart greeter. I was so convinced that the front was supposed to be the exact same as the back that I forgot to cut a deeper neckline So I'm doing that here and I did the exact same to the corresponding pieces of fur Now to sew in the sleeves you first have to sew them into a tube so that they go around your arm So just sew a straight stitch down the side should look something like this Then you're gonna flip it so it's right side out and then feed this into the vest so that the right side of the vest is touching the right side of the sleeve Line up the seam of the sleeve with the seam of the vest, this is going to be like where your armpit is, and then just pin them together and carefully sew around that big hole. Once you're done, you should have a jacket made out of lining, and we're going to do the same thing on the fur. When it comes to sewing with fur, the trick is to tuck the fur inside the edges, and using a lot of pins makes this a lot easier. And to show you what I mean, when you put two right sides together, you'll see a bunch of fur sticking out the middle like a sandwich. Just tuck this in inch by inch as you pin it together. This just makes for a cleaner looking seam from both the inside and the outside. And when you feed it through the machine, just go slowly and carefully. I speed it up because it looks cooler, but I'm actually taking my time here. It's actually sort of satisfying feeling the thick sandwich of fur being sewn together. And you might notice I start and finish each seam with a reverse stitch, which just means I'm sewing backwards. It helps reinforce the stitch so that it doesn't pull apart at the ends from any tension while I'm wearing it. Do this twice and you have two sleeves. Now we're onto the vest. Again, I'm laying them right sides together and tucking in the edges that I'm going to sew along, so the shoulders and from the armpit down to the waist. If it looks like the edges are kind of weird and curvy here, it's only because of the pins, which I'm taking out one by one as they go near the needle.
when you're done, you should be left with two jackets, one made of fur and one made of your lining fabric. And you can get a good sense now of how things are coming together. Now comes the hard part, or at least the tricky part, because it can get a little counterintuitive, but try to think of it just as a puzzle that you're putting together. To sew the lining into the fur coat, you're gonna lay down the fur right side out and then feed it into the lining, which I turned inside out so that the right side of the fur is facing the right side of the lining. Then you're gonna pin and sew a straight stitch all along the neckline, all the way down to the center of the front panels. If you're unsure, you can always stitch little by little and then flip it inside out to see how it looks in case you wanna undo something. God knows that's what I was doing. To flip it, you're not just gonna pull the sleeves inside out anymore. Now that you're sewing the lining and fur together, you have to flip the garment from the bottom where you separate the two so that the lining goes from the outside to the inside of the jacket. It's kind of hard to explain, but you'll see now how all the ugly seams and markings from the lining and the fur are now hidden in between the fabrics and the jacket just looks clean and literally seamless. You'll also notice that the edge of the front panels are softer where they used to have a hard quarter. You can flip it out back again and sew the bottom, still making sure, by the way, to tuck the fur in again, but make sure to leave about 6 to 8 inches in the middle since you need a hole to be able to pull this all inside out again. By the way, if I keep changing shirts multiple times in this video, it's because I was doing this over the course of a couple days. Before we pull this out of that small hole, we're gonna do the sleeves. And the sleeves are where it gets a little tricky. I had to learn by trial and error. You don't actually sew them when they're wrapped in each other like this. You have to sew them right sides together. So you're gonna reach into that hole. No, not the one you're thinking of, the hole that we left in the stitch at the bottom. And you're gonna pull the fur out so that you have the two sleeves. You're gonna wanna pin them right sides together all along the opening. Since they both happen to be inside out and since I need to tuck the fur part in, this can be challenging. I ended up having to do this twice again because I found out that the sleeve was all twisted up so when I tried to put it on it felt so tight. So make sure that the sleeves are straight and lined up when you're connecting them together. And when you're done it should look something like this. Just run it through the machine carefully. You can't take too much time on this. It looks kind of counterintuitive, but now when you're gonna pull the entire garment inside out, that stitch there is gonna make the lining follow right into the fur sleeve. And all that's left for you to do now is close up that pesky little hole in the bottom. Since all of the openings are now sewn up, there's no other way to access the space in between the fur and the lining. It's kind of like being locked outside of a car and you can't get in, so you have to get creative here. I know how other people do it, but I ended up folding the fabrics inwards to hide the raw edges and then I just hand stitched it shut with some blue thread that I found and I'm finally done. You can add some finishing touches if you like, like a button or a clasp or a tag. I also recommend you take a lint roller because that blue lining looks hairy as hell, but I'm the only one wearing this jacket and I'm completely okay with wearing gross unkempt clothing, but you probably already knew that. This is a finished jacket, you guys. I love how it turned out. It's my first time ever making anything like this. I feel like a fat gay Muppet. If I could do it again, I think I would size everything up a little bit more, maybe cut a little bit more outside the lines when I'm cutting out the pieces. Not that it's too small, I just feel like I kind of prefer the baggier look. Other than that though, I'm really actually surprised with how well it fits and looks on me. I was gonna get into drag for this video so I could show you how it looks and it's full homosexual glory, but I'm actually wearing this jacket to an event I'm going to later this week, so be sure to follow me on Instagram if you want to see some pictures of me wearing this. Speaking of pictures, be sure to send me yours if you recreate this tutorial. I always love looking at pictures of people who've been inspired by my work. It still kind of blows my mind actually that anyone in this world wants to look like me, but that's a question for my therapist. But seriously, I want to do more shout outs of people who are recreating my looks. It always just slips my mind, so some of these are from so long ago, I'm sorry. Please don't stop sending in your pictures. Even if it has nothing to do with me, you can send me a picture of your dog or something else of yours. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell icon so every time I post a new upload, you can ignore the notification and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.